Hi, my name is Jane Shibata. I teach at San Monica College in the art department. I teach watercolor painting. What I'm going to show you today are different special effects um, with different tools um, in your watercolor painting. So the first thing I'm going to show is um, with a spattering tool, like a toothbrush. Um, we're going to talk about um, how to use the alcohol, rubbing alcohol, a sponge, and some salt regular table salt. So let's start with um, the spattering technique. You can also use a brush, regular brush for this. But all you have to do is uh, just save some uh, old um, toothbrushes and add some water to it to moisten it and just dip it into the color. And I usually just use my thumb and usually spray um, very close to uh, paper and spatter. You'll get uh, a technique that simulates airbrushing. And this could be used for texture on things like uh, fruits and vegetables or like rock surfaces and landscapes. And all you have to do is just uh, um, get uh, some water on it. You can make larger spattering um, that will change value. The other technique you can use is you just take some color and we can add some salt to this. Now, salt uh, soaks up water. So if you have too much pigment on the paper, it will not um, soak up any of the um, water. So it should be watery, and all you have to do is just add some salt to the surface. And what it does is it picks up the pigment, um, or it picks up the water around the pigment so that when this dries, you just um, rub it off and you'll get this little speckling on the surface of your paper. The uh, other technique you can use is the rubbing alcohol, just regular rubbing alcohol you can buy at a drugstore or any store um, that has um, different grades of, of rubbing alcohol. And you just add some pigment to your paper. And you must do this while the pigment is wet because alcohol will um, push the pigment over so that it will create these uh, circular shapes. If you just dip your brush into the alcohol and you can just touch your paper and it will push the pigment over. You can even paint with it, which is uh, just using your brush uh, in any direction you like and you will start to see how the paint will uh, move over. Now this becomes permanent on your paper because alcohol, uh, alcohol will uh, evaporate. So if you want to make a change, you should not use alcohol for this purpose. But it has a very interesting effect where for landscape or for um, creating different values in something like stone or uh, uh, sand, this will be um, really um, effective in that situation. If you want to create uh, different textures with the sponge. I usually use a sea sponge because it has different parts uh, that are at different angles. So when you dip it into uh, pigment, you can create different kinds of textures with this. You can use this as a base shape and then paint over it after it's completely dry for textural qualities like for fruit and vegetables or for uh, landscape. Uh, stones or mountains uh, ranges. The uh, last technique which I'll show, which is using a regular flat brush, uh, you can do a dry brush technique. And usually I would wet the brush and take all the water out with the rag or paper towel and dip the tip into the pigment. And so when you paint with it, you will get a dry brush technique that will allow you to give you a texture that looks like weathered wood, or it can be used for strokes that go into um, something like an apple that has streaks in it. And it's also useful for landscape if you want to create um, foliage or plants that have uh, long leaves 
and short um, or pointed leaves that will uh, be good for background grass. And those are your basic special effects using all the uh, different tools and uh, materials that I have today. And hopefully that will help you with your landscape or your, for your still life. Um, I hope that this was helpful. If you want more information, uh, log on to our website at smc.edu. Thank you.